AITA for wanting my wife to clear out her late daughter's stuff to free up space for my daughter. We, we had an accidental but wanted second hours baby, so we decided that Lola and the baby would just have to share for now. Our second hours is now too, and is starting to need to not be sharing a room with my wife, and I am starting to think that it's time. I would never have asked it a year or even two years out, but now we're heading into year four. I understand that it's a hard thought and seems callous, but the reality is that we don't have space to keep this up anymore. We need the space. The bedroom split is just not fair and hasn't been for years. Lola is almost a teenager and shouldn't be sharing with one toddler, let alone two. There shouldn't be three kids sharing one of the smaller bedrooms and a total of now five kids sharing one bathroom. All this, while one child gets a large bedroom and bathroom for herself. It's not reasonable. My wife and Molly are still resistant and say it's normal to not want to move things around even years later, and they don't want Mel's things taken from them, especially Molly. I get that, but we can't. It's just not realistic. Even if Mel was still with us, she wouldn't live with us anymore. The plan was always to move Lola into that room once Mel went off to college. Molly was never supposed to have her own room and per the agreement made four years ago, Molly is getting all of Mel's stuff, so nothing is being taken from her. They're furious, and now the whole house is fighting. Lola is sick of her situation. Molly and my wife want nothing to change, and of course I'm the evil bad guy who does everything wrong. Is this really that outrageous? Why did you have more kids when you didn't even have space for the kids you already have separately? Is it because you gotta have ours kids? You suck for that. You can't even take care of them properly financially. What about emotionally? Do you even have enough time for them? Blended family is already difficult in the kids in the first place, and you can't expect your wife and Molly to move out on your time. You only lived with her for a year and knew her for a shorter time so a big difference between your feelings. It's not even on the same level. Ask yourself whether you would feel the same if it was your kid. Would you be able to move on as quickly? Or would you be able to be as logical as you are now? Everyone's different when it comes to grief. From their point of view, moving and changing things really mean she's really gone. Of course, I can see from your point of view logically you do need the space for the kid that's living and alive now. You should talk to them and try to compromise. It won't be easy but you got to do what you need to do. Let's look at some of the popular comments. And today but you need to convince your wife first. That you two need to think of all the children not just the one who has passed. It is a big loss but change is necessary. It might be easier emotionally to move house. Do not get rid of all her things. Rather find the special items to protect and display in the family home. Have a look online for resources to help people move on emotionally. They may need grief counseling. JC, what possesses these people with multiple kids and space issues to have even more kids? ESH, you have been allowing this to go on too long and keep creating issues to stack on top of it too. First up, stop having kids that you have no room for. This is ridiculous. Use a condom, get the snip. You don't need to cram any more kids into this house. Secondly, keep the two youngest in your room until this gets settled. Lola shouldn't be stuck with having to get up with them at night. Even if she's not the one doing the work and you guys are tending to them at night, they are still likely waking her up. And shame on you if she's expected to deal with them at all. She's almost a teenager and needs to sleep. They're your kids. You put in the work and suck it up while you're figuring out the sleeping arrangements. Y'all created this problem and keep creating kids to add to it. You can suffer from having to have a toddler in your room. Thirdly, you need to keep on your wife about freeing up this room. I can understand not wanting Mel's stuff thrown out. That why it needs to get boxed up and put to the side in storage until she's ready to go through it and get rid of unneeded clutter. I understand that your wife is grieving her daughter and I deeply sympathize with that. For imagine the pain of losing a kid so young and just having to move on with my life after that. All of that being said, though, she's hurting your other kids with this refusal to stop treating Mel's side of the room as a shrine. Especially Lola, the kid who's gonna be stuck rooming with babies that aren't hers. That needs to be hammered on consistently until something changes. Because your wife is allowing her grief to cause even more turmoil in the home. Seven kids and three bedrooms. Molly and Lola share. Brendan and Brian share. The littles get bunks since y'all want to run a kid's camp. Maybe the parents get sterilized. OPYTA. AITA for not telling my boyfriend I own the building we live in. When I was 18, my dad gifted me a house with two stories. I am extremely thankful. We are not upper class but my dad bought this house for a cheap price a long time ago. It was his grandmother's cousin's house. I know that this was an extreme privilege and I am forever grateful for this. The layout of this building is like an apartment. 
but it is a house, so basically, each story has its own separate entry, its own kitchen and bathroom. I live upstairs while I rent out the downstairs. My boyfriend 25 male moved in with me about 3 months ago and we have been together for 6 months. I have not asked him for money, neither for utilities or to pay me any rent. The only thing he contributes to is groceries, that we split 50-50. I have not brought up that I own the building as it is not something I tell many people. If people ask me I of course tell them that I own it. But if they just assume I am a renter then they can believe that. The topic of a landlord, the renter downstairs or the owner of the building has not been something we have talked about. This last Tuesday the renter came up to tell me that her freezer has stopped working. I answered the door and my boyfriend heard us talking I suppose. I went downstairs to take a look and we came to the conclusion that she would buy a new one, send me the receipt and I would give her the money. She was very grateful for this solution. When I went upstairs my boyfriend asked if it could be fixed, I told him no, but she was going to buy a new one and I would pay for it. He looked at me like I was crazy and asked me why the heck I would pay for her freezer. I told him that because I am her landlord and the freezer was there when she started renting, I would stand for the cost. He just asked me if I was serious, to which I said I was. He begun screaming at me, asking him why the heck I would hold this information from him, and that I was an evil person. I said I was sorry for not telling him but I did not think that it would matter. He said he could not believe he was together with someone who is a landlord, that all of us just use people for money, and that the only thing we people care about is money and would rather have people be homeless than offering affordable rent. The downstairs is one kitchen, one bath and four other rooms, I charge $500 in rent. I understand many people have had trouble with landlords, but I try my best to be a good one. He demanded that I give him 50% of the money I make from rent or else I was just as bad as he thought. Was I really the jerk for not telling him? He has not talked to me since Tuesday and I have tried telling him that I am truly sorry, but he doesn't answer me at all. What? You're too nice for your own good. You tried to apologize to him after that, and he had the audacity to ignore you. You would have kicked him out that very night because he showed his true colors. A leech, really. Didn't you see the big red flag that he didn't even offer to pay rent or utilities in the first place? I understand if he asked and you declined because you didn't need it, but he assumed he didn't need to pay since you're already living there or something. That kind of mentality, oh, it makes no difference if I live here as well since you're already paying for everything yourself. Oh, big fat no. It matters that I'm no longer living alone. I'm not your parents. You've only been together for six months. He asked to move in with you rent free after only three months. I don't know, it really looks like he's with you for the free rent. Now he's making a big fuss about you being a big bad landlord, but he wants a 50% cut. Break up with him and kick him out as a P don't listen to anything he might say afterward. He might just try to manipulate you or backtrack. You don't need this kind of trash in your life. Let's look at some of the popular comments. Let me get this straight. He must not have offered to pay half of the rent, because then it would have come up and you would have told him, right, he is living with you rent free. Up to now, he thought you were paying the entire rent. On what planet does he deserve half of the tenant's rent money? Please reconsider this relationship. NTA, NTA, dump him. I know that's a common response on this subreddit, but this dude was happy to exploit you for free lodging, and now that he finds out you've got income he wasn't aware of he wants half of it just cause or else you're a big meanie. You do not owe him an apology. You owe him a kick in the rear. Lol, either this isn't real or your BF is a crazy jerk. Why would you want to date and stay with someone like that? NTA but get rid of this guy if he actually exists. 